within the walls of this waterfront home is a couple whose lives are as inspiring as the land they were built upon. Lives well lived even as they face the realities of age. Saying yes, dear, really works. <laughs> Bernard and Diane Rappa married 61 years with five sons, 12 grandchildren, and a great-grandchild almost never were. This is boo-boo. <laughs> <laughs> the two met in college, and after dating for two years, Diane sent Bernard a Dear John letter. About six months later, Bernard took a trip to Canada with friends to go skiing, and as is the case sometimes in this life, a greater hand seems to have been at work. I got halfway down this mountain and at the rest, and I look over and on And we had been broken up for maybe six, eight months. Looked over and I thought, that's Diane. It was indeed Diane who happened to be skiing on the same Canadian slope at that same moment with her new boyfriend. But he was at the bottom of that mountainside, and here were Diane and Bernard on top of the world, getting reacquainted and reunited. Think of the con think of that on a cold winter's day in Canada, they meet up with your ex-girlfriend. I mean, so I always thought it was God's will that we be together, and it was. That unwavering faith is what's guided the rappers over decades of life. The duty to serve their country and each other remains steadfast, especially now as Bernard, 84 years old, cares for Diane, who's living with Alzheimer's. You want a two-year nap? Or you, no, you can't nap. You got to come sit with me. You know, we're we're in this together. During their younger years, camping and canoeing were favorite pastimes with their sons, navigating sometimes treacherous waters with this paddle, which became a symbol of family to Bernard. The cross is right down here in the paddle handle. Long retired yet filled with history, the paddle seemed bound for greater things than collecting dust on the Rappa's porch. And in the middle of the night after the first presidential debate, Bernard felt the commander-in-chief needed a little inspiration, and he reluctantly let it go. Oh, he'll never get it. He'll, it will, he'll be six months before he ever gets it, if he ever gets it. So I said, oh, I'll just bypass him, send it to Pence. And then one day, about three weeks later, a letter arrived from Pennsylvania Avenue. His first words upon reading it, simple yet profound. I don't know if I want to say it on camera. Ho holy S. <laughs> As commander in chief, I intend, I extend my sincere gratitude to you for your service in the United States Army. America enjoys the blessings of hard-earned peace and prosperity because of unyielding patriots like you who courageously answered our nation's call of duty to defend our cherished freedoms. God, I was a cloud died. <laughs> Having read it countless times, it still stirs something deep within when he reads it again, believing it to be genuine. Bled through on the back in different areas, so. I, I believe it's authentic. Maybe I should take and have his check, check to see if his ping, fingerprints are on it, but no, I won't do that. And though it cost him $80 to send the paddle and the White House just a buck 20 to send the letter, it was worth every cent to hold the piece of paper in his hands and most certainly his heart. Rather than my son's throwing it in a dumpster, Trump will have a library without question, they all do. And I think it'll make the library. So someday, maybe a great-grandson or a great-granddaughter or a great-great-great, whatever, will go to the, his museum and they'll see my paddle and my letter. <laughs> That's cool.